All right, so I'm doing this video to address what I meant about uh, the song Hell You Call a Dream with the warning. So I'm gonna show what I meant by giving a few examples of where I've heard that uh, chord progression before. But I'm gonna also read some comments before that. Tom Canfield, so dude, lots of folks flaming you it seems. The warning army is very loyal and I admit when I first heard this banger I said what the hell. Hey DPA, what's up? Hell you call a dream. But with a few listens it moved up to become my new favorite. Just to add another example of the warning truth for those in the TWA at least. Your favorite warning is the last one you heard. Yeah, listen, uh, this is this is the thing with with uh, reactions. If you don't know this by now, it's very simple. What people want to hear is when they want when they watch a reaction, they want to see somebody, um, you know, praising what they like. And when they don't see that, they think uh, you're hating. I'm not hating at all. I love music. But uh, I also have to say what I think when I when I hear something. So, for example, when I hear a chord that has been used so much in in different bands and songs, I I need to call it up, and that's what I'm doing because uh, these same chords I've been hearing so much when I'm doing reactions. Uh, but I pulled up two songs that are uh, really famous that uses this chord uh, progression but but there's a hell of a lot of other uh, bands that use the same chord progression that I don't remember what they're called um, but because I've been reacting so much um, I've been hearing it a lot so that makes it a little bit irritating um, Stephanie, this reactor stinks. Everyone I watched can break the music down understandably, especially if, if it's not enjoyable to them. Not this reactor. I can. Problem is, when I do the reactions, they're done on a live stream. And I can't be sitting there for 15 to 20 minutes uh, doing that. But that's why I'm doing this video. Uh, I'll give you Enrique Barba. I, I'll give you an honest reaction. You're so full of yourself. You won't acknowledge real talent even if you recognize it, which I doubt you can. That's straight up BS. Uh, listen, I, I'm I'm glad that uh, that is going well for for these ladies, and that they're enjoying what they're doing. But with that said, I'm not gonna pretend that wow, what I've been hearing regarding the chords is something that impresses me. You know, but if I do hear something that does impress me, I will I will uh, acknowledge it. You have no idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> this song is in a drop C tuning, very rare. If you had a clue what the hell you're talking about, it might help. Uh, look up people learning to play this song, rare, mostly copies. So there are thousands of musical pieces that are similar. But you're wrong, dude. I played guitar for 40 years, the first time seeing this tuning. Who cares about the tuning? I'm not talking about the tuning. I'm talking about the actual chords. No matter what the tuning. Uh, Kansas, looking at your list of reactions, <laughs> it's hard to tell what you your exactly what your type of music is. It is. I have a very weird music taste. And listen, I'm saying this. Let me turn this off. I'm saying this because I'm very picky uh, with what I like. And uh, and you can't really put a, a frame on or, or put it in a box on what I like. But you have to understand, I as a composer, I hear things differently than you guys. I hear, I can hear the chords while you're listening to the music, you know, just listening to the music. I hear it in a different way. Therefore, it takes way more for me to get impressed. Uh, by it. As for generic chord progression, rock music has been around nearly 60 years 
and there are still an infinite number of notes and chords to choose from. Give, give me an example of a new band whose chord whose music isn't der derivative of something that came before. Yeah, there are, but but you know, in order to make something unique, you have to expand outside of either the four chords. Like this is the four chords. Everybody has heard them. This is the most used chord progression of them all. Uh, this one right here. Everybody and their mama uses it. Oh yeah, th this was a, 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 a what I call a sane person. Thanks for the honest reaction, man. I'm a huge fan of this band, but I appreciate that a var variety of musical tastes is, is important to the scene. Take it easy. Absolutely. I appreciate people like that. They can understand that. Yeah, I like this, but maybe somebody doesn't like it as much, you know? Uh, so I appreciate that, uh, Chris Stratton. I'm pretty sure that hat has baked your brain, says E68 Eldo. Gregory, so if this isn't it, then what is your type of music exactly? And the chord progression may be generic, as you say, but if it fits the foundational framework and flow of the song harmonically and melodically, then what's the problem? I'm not saying there is a problem. Obviously, there's people who enjoy it. I'm just saying, to me, to me, since I have heard this chord progression so many times, it 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 becomes not special. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't become special. I know I've heard it so many times before. I know what it's about. Therefore, it doesn't make make it unique. These three girls have a very high level understanding of melodic melodic and harmonic movement since they are all classically trained pianists as well. Plus, because of that early training and knowledge, all three were formally trained in music theory and composition. Well, see, that might be good, but I think it's bad. You know why I think it's bad? Uh, when you get schooled about music, I don't think it's good because I think that puts a, a frame to your uh, creativity. I really think. I'm not saying that this this has happened to them, but I think what it does is it, it when you go to school to learn music, I think it will most likely put a frame on how you compose stuff because they teach you this is how you're supposed to do it. This is how this is what works or whatever. Uh, hold on. Um, Simply, they know how music and songwriting works. Technically, they're better musician and, uh, musicians and songwriters than many of their peers, uh, some of whom are twice their ages or older. Well, that's up to uh, proof. You know, I've only heard two songs thus far. Uh, listen, I'm a self-taught composer, okay? And I don't know anything about m music theory or anything like that. But I, I am a chord master. Let me try to demonstrate what I mean by that. All right, so I'm going to just play some stuff, improvise, and make it continuous.
So basically, my specialty is to do seamless chords and see what fits and what does not fit. Yeah, so uh, now when I when I make a song, when I compose a song, I go through all kinds of different chords and try to find un unique chords in different patterns and then stitch it, stitch it together. And also, if you have good musical memory or long musical memory, you can in real time record what works and what does not work and throw out what doesn't work and, and keep what does work. But basically what I'm trying to say is uh, in order to create something unique, you need to go outside of these generic chords. I mean, I'm not saying you, you can't make a good song with it. I've done it. I've done a good song with, with three chords. But uh, it really needs you. Need, really, you really need to do something special to do a good song with these uh, generic chords. And I'm not saying this is a bad song. I was just not that impressed with it. So let's go to it. So what I'm talking about is uh, this. So basically, it's literally these, these chords that are just next to each other like this. It's just literally. So. I got two examples of two big songs that uses these chords. One of them is Maggie Every Time We Touch. But they are in a different key, but it's still the same chord progression. So if you hear this. So. And the warning is And this Maggie is As you can hear here So that's one example. Another example is uh, Brian Adams also uses that same thing. So So if we go back to the warning Here. 
and since you know this style of music is uh, since they got guitars basically for somebody like me I only hear the chords most of it you know which is and then they do some little variation at the end to make it a little bit different here They do like and then they go back to then they go to so basically But, so th they do understand how to connect melodies together, because this last chord goes well with, with how they begin the, with, with this. This goes well with, with this. But it also goes well with what they're doing in the chorus because I believe they do in the verse and then they go to the chorus but then at the end of the chorus they go back to this same chord that was in the verse that that connects it back to the verse you know it's not a bad song but it's just for me uh, it's it's not anything that is super special that's all i'm saying uh so yeah, but I, I I like that you know everything's going well for them and that they like doing this music. So, uh, but yeah, it's not about me hating on them. You know, if they did something like I don't know, like Boomy Rhapsody. I'm not saying they should do Boomer Rhapsody, but what I'm saying is if I heard something that was that unique, then you I wouldn't be saying what I said. That's all. Yeah. So take it easy.